So welcome to our morning worship for Sunday the 13th of December and welcome here to Took Church on this the third Sunday of Advent. A special hello and welcome to our friends and colleagues from across our various communities here in the northeast of Scotland and beyond. You are most welcome with us wherever and whenever you may be watching this and I hope and pray that you're all keeping safe and well. Our dear friend Margaret Robb is again sharing the service with me this morning so thank you very much Margaret and we look forward to hearing the message that you have for us. Thank also to Julie for agreeing to read. There are three readings this morning. The first one I'm going to do myself, which is Psalm 126. And then Julie is going to read from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 11 to 15, and then verses 67 to 80. And finally, the third reading from St Matthew's Gospel, Matthew 11, verses 2 to 11. The end of our first prayers, I will, as usual, invite us all to say the Lord's Prayer together. I'm also delighted that Laura and Hannah are able to help us out with our hymns this morning, so thank you both very much indeed. There are three hymns plus a song. The hymns are Come Their Long Expected Jesus, On Jordan's Bank, The Baptist Cry, and finally Fill Your Hearts With Joy and Gladness. And the song is for the Advent lighting song is called A Candle Is Burning. Also, Linda and Imogen are going to help us out at the end of our service with that beautiful song of blessing. So again, thank you both very much for that. And all the details of the hymns, the readings and everything will be on the Facebook and YouTube pages as normal. So I do hope that this will be a joyful service amidst the continuing uncertainty about everything. Mixed messages of localised outbreaks of coronavirus, with many areas of the country facing very difficult times ahead as the authorities battle to contain the outbreaks. Compare with that on the one hand, with on the other hand to welcome news of other areas coming down a tier in the restrictions. The great for news of a vaccination scheme beginning this week is maybe contrasted with the worrying news that here in Aberdeenshire we are on the verge of moving up to level three. Just keeping our eye on that. I know that many families are very worried about Christmas. What they will do, how they will do it, should they do it at all, um, even with the Christmas bubbles. So many people face a difficult dilemma over the coming days. In what was to be the, a relaxation of the restrictions to permit some family gathering over the Christmas period and the return to well, some form of normality. Now that is turned into a should I, shouldn't I debate, which is causing a great deal of stress and anxiety. Combine that with the, the breakdown of the, the, the Brexit negotiations and many people are feeling quite down at the moment. But Christmas is still happening. We more than ever this year need the assurance of the coming of our Saviour. He is coming in the power and gentleness of the Spirit. We will always rejoice. He is bringing good news to the poor. We will never stop praying. He is binding up the broken-hearted. We will give thanks in every circumstance. He is proclaiming liberty to captives and release to prisoners. So we will not quench the spirit, nor despise the words of prophets, but test everything and hold fast to what is good. For God has promised and God is faithful. Come. Let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. I was saying earlier that I hope that this will be 
a joyful service. As on the third Sunday of Advent, we celebrate the joy of Christ. Now our call to worship is taken from Psalm 98. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord. Make a joyful noise before the Lord and let the hills sing together for joy. He is coming to judge the earth with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Let us pray. Here we are, Lord, together in our hearts and in our minds. We come into your presence this morning, praising your faithfulness, giving thanks for your mercy and seeking your joy in our hearts. Thank you for creating us and giving us life and breath today. As we prepare to rejoice at the birth of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, fill us with the expectation and anticipation of this holy season and fill our hearts with the joy of the shepherds on that first Christmas day. Amen. And now let us invite our Advent Lord to come amongst us this morning. Come, the long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free. From our fears and sins release us. Let us find our rest in thee. Now Laura is going to accompany us as we sing our first hymn, this much loved Advent hymn, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. If you're following it through in the hymn book, it's CH4 number 472 or CH3 number 320. is a time of reflection and as a Christian we should reflect on our relationship with our Father God and during the four Sundays in Advent we concentrate on four different elements of that relationship. First Sunday we looked at the hope of Christ and the promise of God to offer us salvation through his only Son. And the second Sunday was all about the peace of Christ and we also remembered the prophets who foretold the birth of Christ. And now, on the third Sunday of Advent, is about the joy of Christ. And we also remember John the Baptist, who came to prepare the way. This candle is also known as the shepherd's candle, as the shepherds were told by the angels that the news they sang about would bring great joy to all the people. And next week, our final week, our final candle, is all about the love of Christ and it's known as the Bethlehem Candle. So, we mark the first Sunday of Advent and light the candle of hope. Advent is the season of hope. We hope for a saviour who can save us, a healer who can heal us, and a counsellor who hears all our sorrows. In darkness that deepens, we wait for the coming of the light of the world. We wait in hope 
as we light this candle of hope. We mark the second Sunday of Advent and light the candle of peace. Advent is the season of peace. We long for a saviour who is our Prince of Peace, who blesses our warring world, meeting our brokenness with a peace that passes understanding. In darkness that deepens, we wait for the coming of the light of the world. We wait in peace as we light this candle of peace. Today we mark the third Sunday of Advent, and today we light the candle of joy. Advent is the season of joy. We hope for Emmanuel, God with us, who knows us more than we know ourselves, and brings us life abundant and everlasting joy. In darkness that deepens, we wait for the coming of the light of the world. We wait in joy as we light this candle of joy. Beloved Father, just as you sent John the Baptist to prepare the way for Jesus, help us to clear the path to our hearts. Show us the distractions in our lives that block us from all our worship of you this Advent. As we celebrate the very first Advent, the first coming, we look forward to the day when we will see your Son, Jesus Christ, face to face. Give us hearts, Lord, that look for your coming, not just today, but every day of our lives. In the midst of our planning just now, slow us down and remind us of the greatest gift we could possibly have from you, your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray to you now. Amen. Now let us listen to that lovely song for Advent time, a candle is burning. Psalm 126. 
When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. Amen. So maybe over the past nine months or so in this pandemic, we've been, we feel as though we've been sowing with tears. And now as we await the birth of our Saviour, and the return of light into this world, let us reap with songs of joy. Let us now come close to our God with our prayers of approach and our prayers of confession. And we will finish our prayers by saying the Lord's Prayer together. So let us pray. Father God, our hearts praise you this Advent time as we remember the excitement and expectation of a new baby. A baby who would bring hope, wonder, and the promise of new life. A baby who would be the fulfillment of promises made long before his birth. A baby who would change the world. A baby who would bring health and new possibilities to those who sought him and to those who did not. With Mary, our hearts are full of praise, and with her, we are full of joy. Father God, we are moved to praise when we look at, this, at the moon and the stars in the heavens above. We marvel at the thought of the star of Bethlehem, guiding the wise men to the place where Jesus lay. On this third Sunday in Advent, we offer you our praise and our adoration. For in the face of the infant Jesus, we recognise that you have come among us to rescue us and to bless us. We are humbled by such goodness towards us. And we realise that we are so unworthy to receive such a precious gift. Yet we rejoice that you love us and care for us, even as a shepherd loves his sheep and is prepared to die for them. As we gaze into the face of the infant Christ, open our eyes to see the Lamb who was slain for us. Release within us the knowledge of our need for saving grace and of how that grace has been given in abundance in the person of your only Son. May he be for us the light that guides us safely through the dark places of this world. May he be for us the life-giving water that wells up within us and the joy that no sorrow can overwhelm. Before Advent ends, before we look forward again to a new year, before God gives us a fresh start, let us now deal with unfinished business. We bring our sorry hands with the unfilled promises to you and to each other, with the unfilled promises to ourselves, with the unopened presence of time, of interest, of love, which others have offered. We give you with sorry hands the thank yous that were never said, the apologies that were never made, the time that was never spent. Cleansed, restored, forgiven and renewed, may we be for you your prophetic voice for this generation, your voice crying out in the wilderness of this our world. Prepare ye the way for the Lord. Bless our worship. Teach us from your word and hear our prayers in Jesus' name, who taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts 
as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for ever. Amen. And now we're going to hear our second reading from Julie. And the reading is from St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 1. And Julie will be reading from verses 11 to 15, and then from verses 67 to 80. Luke chapter 1, verses 11 to 15 and 67 to 80. There appeared to him an angel of the Lord, standing on the right of the altar of incense. At this sight, Zechariah was startled, and fear overcame him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been answered. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall name him John. Your heart will thrill with joy, and many will be glad that he was born, for he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. And at verse 67. And Zechariah, his father, was filled with the Holy Spirit and uttered this prophecy. Praise to the God of Israel, for he has turned to his people, saved them and set them free, and has raised up a deliverer of victorious power from the house of his servant David. So he promised, age after age he proclaimed by the lips of his holy prophets, that he would deliver us from our enemies out of the hands of all who hate us, that he would deal mercifully with our fathers, calling to mind his solemn covenant. Such was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to rescue us from enemy hands and grant us free from fear to worship him with a holy worship, with uprightness of heart in his presence our whole life long. And you, my child, you shall be called prophet of the highest for you will be the Lord's forerunner to prepare his way and lead his people to salvation through knowledge of him by the forgiveness of their sins. For in the tender compassion of our Lord, the morning sun from heaven will rise upon us to shine on those who live in darkness under the cloud of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. As the child grew up, he became strong in spirit he lived out in the wilds until the day he appeared publicly before Israel. Amen. Thank you, Judy. Now, the, the candle on our Advent wreath for the third Sunday in Advent, as we have heard, is the candle of joy. But what does joy mean to us? Is it just being in a happy state of mind? Or is there much more to it than that? Many feel that in these testing times, the feeling that sums up most people perhaps is gloom and despondency rather than joy. It's difficult to say to those who are facing this Christmas with sadness following the loss of a loved one or the breakdown of a relationship or the loss of a job. It's difficult to say to them, be joyful. As we read in Psalm 126, when the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. As we come towards the end of this year of darkness, let us pray that this candle of joy will bring light into this world. I always find it difficult to equate the feeling of joy with the, the star of the show, to, so to speak, on both the second and the third Sundays in Advent, and that of course is John the Baptist. During these middle Sundays of Advent, the spotlight is most definitely on John. Last week we read the prophecy from Isaiah in chapter 30, chapter 40, pardon me, verse 3. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Now John gate crashes, perhaps our cosy Advent picture of Mary and Joseph making their way along the dusty road to Bethlehem. 
the shepherds grazing their sheep on the quiet hillsides, and the magi making their way from the east following the star, like some divine game of chess with all the main characters sort of moving into position. And bang, in comes John, somewhat like an unwanted guest that turns up in the middle of a party. In he comes. Is this by accident or by design? We know that John was rough and ready and the descriptions of him from last week's reading from St Mark's Gospel gives us perhaps a, a picture of him. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. Now we hear from the Luke account that Julie read out to us this morning that he was a special baby granted by God to his mother Elizabeth and father Zechariah in their old age. Now the angel tells Zechariah that John will be a joy and a delight to them, which no doubt he was, having given up hope of ever having a child of their own, but he was no ordinary child. At his birth, when Zechariah regained his speech, he, like the Old Testament prophets, knew the reason why John was born and the very important role that God had given him. He said, And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. And that was to be John's remit. Always the bridesmaid, never the blushing bride, if you know the saying. He broke with tradition. He was never frightened to, to rattle a few cages and upset a few people, which as we know ultimately led to his execution when he fulfilled his promise and his purpose, of course. Now this was the type of person who burst uninvited into our Christmas preparations, into our away in a manger and silent night vision of what Christmas is all about. John's gospel of repentance prepared the way for Jesus's ministry here on earth. As a Christian, we experience the joy of the Christmas season and the hope, the peace and the love which Jesus gives us through his teaching. And in many ways, that teaching was brought about in no small way by the life and dedication of John the Baptist. In St Matthew's Gospel, Jesus said of him, Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. So maybe there needs to be more John the Baptists in our world today. Maybe that is the role and the purpose of us all. If we're looking for a good role model in our Christian lives, then we should look no further than John the Baptist, the greatest man that ever lived, according to Jesus. I wonder what lessons we can take from John the Baptist this Advent time. How can we prepare ourselves, our lives, our friends, our church, our community? How can we prepare for the coming of the Lord? In our next very well-known Advent hymn, we sing of the message and the impact of John the Baptist. On Jordan's bank, the Baptist's cry announces that the Lord is nigh. Come then and hearken, for he brings glad tidings from the King of Kings. Now Laura is kindly going to lead us in our next hymn on Jordan's Bank, the Baptist Cry. If you're following it in the hymn book, it's CH4 number 334 
and CH3 number 208. God our prayers of thanksgiving and our prayers for others. Let us pray. Beloved God, at this Advent time we ask that you fill us with your presence from the very start as we prepare for the holidays and gifts to be given. Remind us of the gift you gave when you sent your Son from heaven. The first Christmas gift you gave was the greatest gift ever. He came as a baby born in a manger, a gift waiting to be opened to reveal your love for each one of us. Restore to us the wonder that came with Jesus' birth, when he left the riches of heaven and wrapped himself in rags of earth. Speak to our hearts today and make us obedient to your call. Set distractions and worries aside as we remember so many in our world and in our commun community who find it hard to name their blessings. Their circumstances are far more harsh than ours, and so we pray for those less fortunate because their hearts have been weighed down with tragedy and grief. Let us play, pray for the elderly, many of whom are so lonely, for families who are forced to choose between paying rent and buying food. For people who find themselves suddenly unemployed. And for all others whose circumstances we do not know, but who need a special blessing at this time. Lord, hear our prayers for those in our own community who are struggling with life today. Help us to receive the gifts that Jesus offers us and to offer the gifts that he gives through us. In his precious name, we ask you to hear our prayers. Amen. Now we 
notable here <clears throat> our third reading from Julie. The reading is from St. Matthew's Gospel, Matthew chapter 11, verses 2 to 11. Matthew chapter 11, verses 2 to 11. John, who was in prison, heard what Christ was doing and sent his own disciples to him with this message. Are you the one who is to come or are we to expect some other? Jesus answered, go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind recover their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are made clean, the deaf hear, the dead are raised to life, the poor who are, are hearing the good news, and happy is the man who does not find me in a stumbling, block, a stumbling block. When the messengers were on their way back, Jesus began to speak to the people about John. What was the spectacle that drew you to the wilderness? A reed bed swept by the wind? No? Then what did you go out to see? A man dressed in silks and satins? Surely you must look to palaces for that. But why did you go out? To see a prophet? Yes, indeed, and far more than a prophet. He is the man whom scripture says, Here is my herald, whom I send on ahead of you, and he will prepare your way before you. I tell you this, never has there appeared on earth a mother's son greater than John the Baptist, and yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Amen. A lady was searching for the perfect birthday card for her husband. When she came across a very promising one. On the outside it read, Sweetheart, you're the answer to my prayers. Then she opened it up and there on the inside was printed, You're not what I prayed for exactly, but apparently you were the answer. For thousands of years, the Jewish people have been praying for a Messiah, a delivery, deliverer who would conquer their enemies and establish a kingdom of righteousness and might, a warrior and a king. And through his power, the Jews would again reign in peace and prosperity. Then, Along comes Jesus, a poor carpenter with rather questionable friends. John thinks he probably is the one that we were waiting for, the long-awaited Messiah who has come to set up a different kind of kingdom. Perhaps we can forgive even some of Jesus' strongest supporters for asking, you're the answer to our prayer, really? <coughs> John the Baptist had also been praying for and preparing for the Messiah his whole life. He had been doing this with a harsh criticism of the ruling religious establishment and a stern call for repentance for all. His idea of Jesus was then one of a warrior type, someone like himself, preaching fire and brimstone. John even said the coming Messiah would baptise his followers with the Holy Spirit and with fire. In today's Gospel, John is in prison. King Herod had put him there for daring to criticise him for marrying his brother's wife, Herodias, and she hated John even more than her illegitimate husband hated John, who probably knew that his days were numbered. He was here 
hearing, John was hearing of the conduct of Jesus, whom he thought was the Messiah, in preparation of whom he had given his life. He had also heard, though, that this Messiah, far from preaching brimstone, was doing works of mercy. And this was very confusing for John. So he sent some of his disciples to ask Jesus if he indeed was the one he was waiting for. We sometimes have a hard time seeing Jesus in others, do we not? Jesus said that he was in the least of his people. But we have our own ideas of whom Jesus should be in. So we judge some people worthy of our concern and mercy, and others worthy only of hellfire and damnation. It's not easy to see Jesus in our enemy. It's like a woman named Marlin who wrote a magazine with the stories some time back. One day, her little daughter Emma was playing with her paper dolls. Now these were very special dolls. They were all Bible characters. And suddenly, Emma realised that the Jesus character was missing. Well, they looked all over the house, but they couldn't find Jesus anywhere. Later that afternoon, Emma came running to her mother with some good news. She had found Jesus. He was in one of her daddy's magazines. Emma proudly held out her new Jesus, but Marilyn gasped as she looked at the picture. It was a picture of a tall, bearded man dressed in rags. Because of the beard and his long hair, he did slightly resemble him as paper doll Jesus. And as Marlin reflected on Jesus' words about poor and powerless, she eventually agreed that her little girl had found Jesus and she wondered what she would have felt if Emma had come with a picture of Hitler or a man who was arrested the other day for almost murdering a baby. I'm inclined to struggle with that idea and I'm sure many of us struggle with such things. But let's remember the words of Jesus. Whatever you do for the least of my people, you do for me. I think it was F.B. Mayer who once said that when you see someone who does something evil, there are two things we do not know about them. The first is that we do not know how hard they tried to go straight. And the second is that we do not know the power of the forces that make them the way they are. We don't know what we would have done in the same circumstances. It's very easy to condemn when we have a secure black background, been brought up by decent people living in a safe country, but supposing, just supposing, we had been born to a drug addict or in a country where violence and injustice was the normal rule, would we be strong enough to pull ourselves out of the mire? Jesus didn't just hear people. He restored their place in society. His words remind us that Jesus came for the hurting 
the helpless, the overlooked people of society. That's always a good thing to remember at this time of year, especially when our materialism is given a free range and we're inclined to confuse our celebration of Christmas with the character of Jesus. John the Baptist lifts the hope and mercy, the compassion and healing. A kingdom for all people. And no, it wasn't exactly what people were praying for. It was so much more than that, so much better. During this Christmas season, may we all discover that same hope. Amen. Now, Laura will lead us in our final hymn. It's um, a lovely hymn, I think, for, for Christmas time and for all the celebrations that we have. Uh, it's filled your hearts with joy and gladness. Number 103. writer Henry Nguyen writes, joy does not simply happen to us. We have to choose joy and keep choosing it every day. So do we choose joy each and every day? Or do we let the gloom of the challenges that we face in our lives, particularly in this time of pandemic, do we allow that to consume us? The third Sunday of Advent is celebrated in some places as Gaudete Sunday. A Gaudete is a Latin word meaning rejoice. So let us rejoice. Got a short reflection here. Joy may be like a fountain, but it has no on-off switch. We can't manufacture joy or produce it on demand. Running after joy is like running after the wind. You can't catch it. 
Joy is wild and treasured, like a rare, shy bird that suddenly appears. It can be fleeting, or its presence can rest with you like a benediction for days and months. It shows up in the strangest places and just as quickly disappears. The moment you try to hold it, it flees away. In the hand of a dying man released from suffering. In the eyes of a new mother cuddling her newborn baby. Was that joy? Or something like it? In our Good Friday world, where death is our constant companion, God holds out a hand with surprisingly little fingers. God is with us. It's so Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 8 to 10. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. So now as we run up to the beginning, beginning of the Christmas season, let the joy of Christmas fill our hearts. So many thanks for joining us this morning for our worship. Thank you to Laura, Hannah, Julie, Linda and Imogen for helping us out with the service. And a huge big thank you again to Margaret. Now, as far as next week is concerned, the Kirk Session of Upper Donside have requested permission from Gordon Presbytery to reopen Lumsden Church. So, God willing, the service next Sunday for the fourth Sunday in Advent will be recorded in Lumsden Church. It will be recorded in live service in the morning and then posted on to Facebook and YouTube in the evening. Now, I'll send out more details as they become aware. And <laughs> As we know what's happening, I'll be sending out more details throughout the week. So after the benediction, Linda and Imogen are going to finish our service with that beautiful, traditional sung blessing. But in the meantime, may the joy of the Christmas season fill our hearts this week as we prepare to welcome the Christ child of Bethlehem into our lives. May our Advent Lord be with us and those who we love and keep us all safe and well. Let us pray. Father God, your servant John the Baptist came with a challenging message, calling for repentance and lives to be transformed. Those who heard were filled with expectation, waiting for Messiah, and yet ultimately failing to notice his arrival in that humble stable. This Advent season, may we be filled with expectation as we celebrate the greatest gift of all, your Son, Jesus Christ. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us and all whom we love, now and forevermore. Thank you.